Hello, this is Akram Jafar, and today I'm going to deal with picture tests and practical anatomy of the thorax. This video is about the mediastinum. You may use the video as a revision or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video and spend some time to read the question and come up with the answer. Replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Which anatomical structure forms a surface landmark at the level of the interrupted line on the anterior thoracic wall? What is the vertebral level of the interrupted line? The interrupted line lies in the transverse thoracic plane. Note that it lies at the level of the second costal cartilage. In the midline, the sternal angle or the manubrio-sternal joint between the manubrium and the body of the sternum can be felt as a horizontal ridge just underneath the skin. This is an important surface anatomical landmark used clinically and known as the angle of Lewis to identify the second costal cartilage and hence the ribs and intercostal spaces can be counted. The transverse thoracic plane extends posteriorly and lies at the level of the intervertebral disc between the fourth and fifth thoracic vertebrae. Identify the structures one to three. With which chamber of the heart does each one of them communicate? This is a view of the anterior surface of the heart with the great vessels. One is the superior vena cava, and you can see that it is formed by the union of the left and right brachiocephalic veins. The left brachiocephalic is longer and more horizontal than the right because it has to cross the midline and unite with the right brachiocephalic in order to form the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava drains the blood from the body above the diaphragm to the right atrium, so it is connected to the right atrium. Note that the right atrium forms the right border of the heart and that it has an auricle. Two is the ascending aorta and you can see its continuity with the arch of the aorta. It arises from the left ventricle which forms the left border of the heart. Three is the pulmonary trunk and you can see its continuity with the right ventricle which forms most of the anterior surface of the heart. List the three branches of A and the three structures supplied by structure B. This is a view of the mediastinum from the left. In order to be oriented, note the posterior thoracic wall here with the sympathetic trunk beaded by ganglia. And you can see the middle mediastinum, which is occupied by the pericardium, enclosing the heart. And this is the approximate level of the transverse thoracic plane that separates between the superior and inferior mediastinum. So structure A is located in the superior mediastinum. It is the arch of the aorta, and it has three branches. The first one is given to the right and cannot be seen in this view. It is the brachiocephalic trunk. The second branch can be seen here, and this is the left common carotid. And the third branch is the left subclavian artery. Note the structures that are located inferior to the aortic arch. They are the left pulmonary artery arising from the pulmonary trunk, the left main bronchus, and the left pulmonary veins. Together, they form the root of the lung. Nerve B descends from the neck, passes in front of the root of the lung, lies in close proximity to the pericardium, which it supplies with sensory fibers, on its way to the diaphragm, which is not shown here. It provides motor fibers to the diaphragm. The third structure supplied by the phrenic nerve is the parietal pleura, mediastinal and the central part of the diaphragmatic pleura, which receive somatic sensory fibers from the phrenic nerve. Note that there is another nerve here, which also descends from the neck, but passes posterior to the root of the lung, and this is the vagus nerve, the 10th cranial nerve. The wall of which of the tubes 1 to 4 is represented in the histological section? The histological section shows the wall of an elastic artery with tunica intima, tunica media, whose entire thickness contains elastic fibers, and tunica adventitia. Some smooth muscle cells and collagen fibers are also present in the tunica media, but they are not shown in this stain. In elastic arteries, elastic laminae predominate to provide for elastic recoil during diastole. Thus, damping the pulsatile flow resulting from the intermittent contraction of the heart. Such structure of elastic or conducting artery is present in the largest blood vessels, for example, the pulmonary trunk and the aorta and its main branches. On the plastic model, the heart has been removed. 
One is the superior vena cava, and it's a vein. Two is the aortic arch, and it is an elastic artery from which the histological slide was most likely prepared. Three is the trachea. The histological structure of the trachea is totally different from the provided slide. For example, it is lined by respiratory epithelium, pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium, and it contains hyaline cartilages in its wall. Four is the esophagus, and again, it is lined by ratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium and has a lot of smooth muscle or skeletal muscle in its wall. So the photomicrograph matches with two. Which of the following nerves one to four, first of all, causes contraction of the smooth muscle fibers of the bronchial airways and provides sensory innervation for the costal pleura? This is a view of the mediastinum from the left. In order to be oriented, note the posterior thoracic wall with the sympathetic trunk. This is the anterior thoracic wall with the ribs and costal cartilages, and here is the diaphragm. The middle mediastinum contains the pericardium, and here is the diaphragm, and note the continuity of the nerve 2 with the diaphragm. Nerve 2 descends from the neck to supply the diaphragm. It is the phrenic nerve. One is another nerve that descends from the neck, but passes behind the root of the lung. It is the vagus nerve. You can see here the left pulmonary artery representing the root of the lung, left lung here, and that the vagus nerve passes behind it. Number four, the nerve four, is a component of the intercostal neurovascular bundle. It is an intercostal nerve. You can see that it is the lowermost structure in the bundle below the vein and artery, intercostal vein and intercostal artery. Now going back to the question, smooth muscle contraction of the bronchial airways requires parasympathetic input and this is provided by one vagus nerve which provides parasympathetic innervation for thoracic viscera and abdominal viscera down to the end of the midgut, border between middle third and distal third of the transverse column. Note that the sympathetic trunk 3 also provides innervation to the smooth muscle of the bronchial tree, but this innervation causes relaxation of the muscles and dilated respiratory passages. The costal pleura is the part of the parietal pleura that lines the ribs and the thoracic wall, the thoracic wall where the ribs are located, and it is supplied segmentally by intercostal nerves, of which Nerve number four is a representative. Note that the phrenic nerve also supplies parietal pleura, but it doesn't supply the costal pleura. It supplies the mediastinal pleura and the central part of the diaphragmatic pleura. The peripheral part of the diaphragmatic pleura is again supplied by intercostal nerves. Identify the structure with which rib it is closely related. Identify the structure with which artery it anastomoses. This is a posterior view of mediastinal structures on the heart. It shows the esophagus here and the aortic arch and the descending aorta. A is the third branch of the aortic arch, the left subclavian artery. The subclavian artery is related to the superior surface of the first rib, posterior to the attachment of scalinus anterior. In this situation, it is accompanied by the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. The artery can be compressed or stretched when there is an extra cervical rib above the first rib, and this may cause neurovascular symptoms in the upper limb. Now, structure B is a branch of the descending aorta. It is a posterior intercostal artery of which there are nine pairs arising from the descending aorta. The posterior intercostal arteries pass around the thoracic wall to anastomose with anterior intercostal arteries. These anterior intercostal arteries are branches of the internal thoracic artery, which is a branch of the subclavian artery. In coarctation of the aorta, where there is narrowing of the aorta at this location, a collateral circulation is formed because of this anastomosis. More blood will travel from the subclavian artery, proximal to the site of obstruction, to the internal thoracic artery, to the anterior intercostal, and then posterior intercostal, to return to the descending aorta, distal to the site of the coarctation or narrowing. This will make the intercostal arteries dilated and tortuous, and their pulsations in long-standing cases will cause notching of the lower border of the ribs because of the close relation of the intercostal neurovascular bundle to the costal groove at the lower border of the rib. A central venous catheter was placed into the internal jugular vein 
to monitor the central venous pressure in an acutely ill patient. A few hours later, the patient developed a milky drainage from the catheter. Cultures were not positive for microorganisms. This was finally diagnosed as chyle, which of the sites 1 to 5 was most likely accidentally damaged during the placement of the catheter. Chyle is the lymph mainly absorbed from the small intestine and contains a lot of fat. This lymph is carried to the cisterna chyle from which the thoracic duct starts. The thoracic duct is the largest lymph channel in the body and drains about three quarters of the body. It opens into the venous circulation at the left venous angle. The left venous angle is defined as the junction of the left internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein. Therefore, site 3 is most likely damaged site in this case where the catheter was passed through the internal jugular vein. Let's identify the other options. One is the junction of the right brachiocephalic vein and the superior vena cava. Two is an inferior cardiac vein draining into the left brachiocephalic vein. Four is the azygous vein arching over the root of the right lung in its way to drain into the superior vena cava. And five is a branch of the pulmonary artery which supplies the lung with deoxygenated blood.